I was like just looking at clips on Facebook with with vintage. They were just vintage clips of talk shows. Mm -hmm. And there was a sex educator who came on and she made the comment that there is no such thing as safe sex, only safer sex. What do you think about that, Carlin? <laughs> it makes me laugh. What about masturbation? That's the safest sex you can have in your in, entire life. And, you know, that's when Sex for One came out. That's when Betty got her first publishing deal was in 87 because of the um, AIDS epidemic yeah. and mm -hmm. HIV. And it was like, okay, let's put out a book about safe sex. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Masturbation. <laughs> That was my first thought. And this sex educator never mentioned masturbation. It was all focused on partner sex. What's safer than masturbation? You know, it kind of goes back to the concept of virginity for me mm -hmm. as well. And Benny and I always felt like if you're having orgasms by yourself on a regular basis, you're not a virgin. Right. This whole idea that sex is defined as sex with someone else. Mm -hmm. What about sex with myself? Because if I'm orgasmic, right? And I'm sexual. And then we take that virginity piece off the table. Well, that puts a big dent in that rape culture. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're sexual, you just have an experienced penetration with right. another person, right? But you can experience penetration by yourself. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so masturbation is step one. I, I want to talk to a little bit about like the whole term safe sex and safer sex. I understand why it needs to be there, right? Because condoms with strangers, there, there are STIs, there are diseases, AIDS is still out there. But if we have to talk in terms of safer sex, there there's an inherent implication of danger, right? Which can be sex negative. I mean, I can compare it to like eating a meal. Sex is a need, just like nourishing ourselves with good food is a need. Now, are there dangers involved with eating? There are. You could choke, you could get food poisoning, you know, things could happen, but we don't talk about safer eating, right? <laughs> Well, we don't shame eating and we shame sex. Yes. Yes. Which is yes. why most of, you know, people have sex after a few drinks and that's a problem. Right. right? So if we want to be aware and in our bodies and sober, it starts with self-sexuality. And then when we engage partners, it's on our own terms and it's always going to be safe. Right. Right. So true. So true. Betty used to always say, she's like, when in doubt, give a hand job. Yeah. So if you're somewhere and you see someone and they're interesting and then you're like, mm, I'm not sure about this one, hand jobs. Yeah. It goes back to there's a whole buffet, a whole menu of all different kinds of sex acts. And we seem to just always just think of penis and vagina as or some form of penetration. But I enjoy a lot of sex outside of penetration. Absolutely. And, you know, focusing on v penis, vagina and penetration, it's procreative sex. Mm -hmm. Right. And what if that became something that was like a small piece, right? Yes. The, the procreative sex was like the whipped cream at the dessert bar. <laughs> and maybe mm -hmm. you might put a little bit on top, but it also is heteronormative and it leaves out people um, who are queer. Right. Who are maybe disabled. Mm -hmm. Right. Who have erection issues. Yes. If people, women struggling with painful penetration, you don't have to penetrate to be sexual, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, there's so many other things, so many other ways to view our sexuality and define our sexuality. And frankly, the whole penetrative, safer sex, heteronormal, I find it all so boring. Right, right. We can always rely on masturbation. Betty said it's the best sex, the most reliable sex, and really the safest sex that you can have throughout your lifetime.